the God of Jesus. We thank you this day, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to remove me out of the way, Lord, so people can hear, so the people can hear a word from you. Lord, let my words be clear, oh, Father God. Lord, you move right now, and I just want to say thank you because you've been so faithful to us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say amen and amen. God bless you. How you doing today? Amen. God has truly blessed us and is blessing us. Look at them curtains. Amen. Without further ado, Genesis chapter 22. Amen. Genesis chapter 22. When you found it, please stand and reverence to God's word and, say, and signify by saying, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A word, amen. And the word of God says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto a place which God told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. You may be seated. How to pass a test. I picked Abraham because that word in Hebrew, tempt, it means trying. It means to prove. So because God, he tells us in James that he can't, we, we can't be tempted. Because it's not of God. It's when we are enticed away with our own lust. Now, Abraham, this man had went through many tests. God had told him to get up from his land, and I need you to go to a place where I'm going to show you. He told him he was going to have a kid well past the prime of his life. And God let him have that kid. You know, when I used to take tests, I'm a pretty good test taker. My problem is I didn't apply myself before the test because I was satisfied with what I got. If I got a C, back then a D was good for me. Now, God's word, he throws tests at us all the time. Are you ready to pass the test? Are you ready to do what you want to do in your eyes, in your sight, and take care of the test yourself? Do you apply yourself to your word? Do you open up? Do you study? Do you read? Do you understand what God is trying to put you through? I heard a brother say the other day, a test is to show your deficiencies. It's to help you to get better in that thing that you're lacking. And we lack a lot of stuff when it comes to God. That's what. son, he was going to raise him up again. 
It tells us that in Hebrews 11, that he trusted him. He said, by faith. See, a lot of times we don't want to walk by faith. We walk by what's going on. Bishop or man of God then told you, your God is making you a house. I need you to go out, keep your job. I need you to work. I need you to do all these things. But then a certain price comes up, and we're like, Lord, I can't afford that. What is that showing? That's showing doubt right there. Because, the, the, you know, we have, to be, we have to be wise with our money, of course, and we don't want to put ourselves out there. But sometimes God wants to prove us. Because when he puts a test on us, that means he's trying to prove you in something. He's trying to get you to go to the point to where it's going to hurt. My wife got this book she writes. It's called Stretch. It makes you stretch till it hurts. If you never read that book, try to get a copy from her. Amen? Amen. Amen, James. You know, God is so awesome to us. You know, <laughs> he's blessed me in so many ways, and I just can't begin to count it all. But when I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, I'm like David. God, thank, I thank you, Lord, because we know that God is faithful. Now it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Another test. When you find yourself going through the same thing over and over again because you won't humble yourself, there was a word that came out the other day. It was called rationalize. We like to make excuses for our excuses. Well, you know, God, I don't really believe you can help me in this. Even though you created the world in six days, you can make a donkey talk. I just don't believe you can do this thing. I don't believe you can wake me up without an alarm clock. I just, I just refuse to believe it, Lord. I can't do it. But see, when God keeps sending that test to you, he's trying to prove you. He's trying to get something out of you that needs to be worked out. Believe me, Brother Adams knows. God sent a bunch of tests to me. Some I pass, some I fail. But I'm getting to the point now where God is getting me to a place to where I recognize the enemy. I was at the store across the street yesterday, and I was buying some stuff. And the, guy, and the lady, young lady said, well, this is how much change you get back. I didn't think of nothing of it. I put it in my pocket, and I walked off. Then when I got to the car, I said, hold up. I looked, and she gave me too much change. Now, at that point, I could have did one or two things. I could have said, oh, Lord, you done blessed me with some extra money. Or I could have took the money back and said, here, you gave me too much money. And I chose the latter because I know that God, he, he loves it when you're honest. He loves it when you're telling the truth. He don't like a lie. He don't like manipulations. Believe me, I know. Been there, done that, bought the hat and the T-shirt, and God was not pleased with me. But how do we pass the test? Amen. I'm glad you asked. We see here that in 13 it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. We mentioned that earlier. Because a lot of people, they would take that word in Genesis and say, well, see, the Bible, it contradicts itself. That's why it's so important to do word study. It's so important to get into God's word and understand it. See, that took me a long time to get a hold of, that I thought I could just go off memory. I thought I could just read a little bit, teach a class, and nothing to happen to me. I got awakened real quick when I used to teach Sunday school. Many of y'all heard this testimony. Bishop told him to make me sweat, ask them hard questions. And I didn't have the answer because I wasn't studied. So them tests, I kept flunking. And some of us are flunking tests day after day after day after day because we don't trust and have faith and believe that God can get us through this thing. But when we start to read our word and understand what Abraham went through, look at the life of Abraham. God told him to leave his house. Go to a place that I'm going to show you. 
And then he says, once he did what God told him to do, he went to Egypt twice and lied. Saying, I, I, I feared because I thought you would take my wife and kill me. Instead of trusting in the almighty God. Instead of having faith that God's going to get him through. But Abraham, even when he was old in age, God said, by this time next year, he was 99. Sarah was 90. He said, by this time next year, about the time of the baby, you're going to have a baby. And Sarah laughed with inside herself. And then the angel of God said, is there anything too hard for God? But a lot of us make things so hard. What we do is we'll start, there's that word again, rationalizing, making an excuse for that excuse, for that excuse. Well, you know God. Look at Moses. God told him to go speak to the children of Israel. Well, God, you know I can't speak properly. Well, that's okay. I got your brother Aaron to go with you. God loved him so much. And if we continue to pray and fast and do the things that God wants us to do, he can show us a way how to pass the test. But a lot of us will never get to that point because when the tests come, we start freaking out. Like, why, God? Why is this happening to me? Why? Why does this happen to me? Why are you giving this to me, Lord? Instead of saying, okay, why not me? Lord, you help me move past this because I know you're almighty. You're justified in everything that you do, and you're a righteous God. But some people think because, oh, they don't want me to wear pants because I'm a female. God, that was the Old Testament. God, God, he didn't mean that for us, us modern women. He wants us to wear pants because, you know, that's what God does. They don't know the Bible. I don't see nothing wrong with me. I'm a female. I don't see nothing wrong with me loving another female. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, you interpret the Bible how you interpret it, and I'll interpret it the way I want to interpret it. And that's the problem. When you get to the point where you're saying, I don't see nothing wrong with it, you need to stop, drop, pray, and then you need to get in the mirror. It's some things that, yeah, there's nothing really wrong with it. But just like Jesus did, he asked his father's permission to do it. So when we get in a point to where the test is coming and God is trying to move us to the next level, some of us will never pass. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. Bear with me. I'm getting ready to get to, to my point. What y'all want to hear. Amen. We have 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 13, amen? Amen. It's going to help you out a little bit, amen? Amen. 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 God, is, God is truly amazing when it comes to his word, if you allow him to show you some things. You know what I mean? I got quiet. They don't know what it means when God's showing you some things. Amen. 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 And the word of God reads, and I, I need y'all to pay attention here. There had no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now, when he's talking about that word temptation in the beginning, it depends on who's saying that. We know that God can't tempt us. So that if, if God was talking there, then it would have been that it's, it's a test. But it's a temptation that has befallen man because we all get tempted. We all come through things that things are going to come up against us. But he says, with that temptation, which is a test to get you through, you'll be able to make it. But you have to be able to understand when you were going through a test. When you go through a test, you can't, you can't, you can't stop praying. You can't get mad at Bishop because he's telling you, or one of us preachers, that thus says the Lord, and it don't fit in your criteria, so you get mad and you want to leave. You just fail that test. What we have to be able to do, there's this, there's this game. It was beanbags, and you tried to throw it through a hole. 
But if you didn't hit the hole, it would stick on that board. Sometimes instead of letting our test go through that hole, it'll stick on us, and we're walking around, woe is me. Why can't I get past this thing? Oh, Lord, you need to help me. But we're not sincere. It was mentioned earlier, we need to pray. You can't do a drive-by prayer. It won't work. God is not pleased with that. But many of us, we, want, we think that, okay, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my soul the Lord to keep. And you really need to be careful if you're thinking, if you're starting to say, well, you know, I know God is pleased with me. How presumptuous are you? You got to be careful. I hope God is pleased with me. But when you're no, hmm, let me in on that secret. God is so amazing. But a lot of us, we won't ever get to taste his goodness. We won't ever get to go to second base because we detest to come and we're stuck on first base. We're stuck in between first base and second base. We're thinking about, well, should I steal second base or should I go back to first? Should I steal second base or should I go back to first? Instead of moving forward, walking by faith, understanding that God is almighty. And when you allow him to be, all, to be the almighty God in your life, these tests that you get, they're going to pass away. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. But a lot of times we never get to that morning part because we done freaked out in the crying part. We done left our posts. When I was in the Army, we had what we call CQ, where there was one of us, we had to guard the, the barracks, basically. That's what we did. And one night, one of the guys decided, well, you know, don't nothing ever happen, so I think I'm going to leave for a couple hours. The moment he decided to leave, there was an earthquake that happened. I don't know if y'all remember the earthquake in 89 in California. I was there. That's what made me, made up my mind to say, well, I, you know, I don't really want to be in an earthquake. But the moment you think nothing's going to happen, guess what? That's when it's always going to happen. Because you've gotten lax. You've gotten lazy. You've stepped back and said, okay, God, my ship is cruising. We're going okay. We're going along okay. My bills are paid. I don't cuss my wife out too much anymore. I pick up my word when I'm going to church. But everything's going hunky-dory. Uh, wrong. You have to understand that God, he wants us to pass tests. First Peter 1. And seven. Thank you, God. Hallelujah to your name, Father God. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Sometime in our lives, we'll get to a point where we're complacent with everything. We don't be like Paul, no matter what state I'm in. Therefore, I'm content. We get complacent. Because we want to, well, you know, God, this doesn't really mean that. It doesn't really mean what you say it means. You know, I, it, it can't be that serious. Amen. First Peter 1 and 7. It says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. <laughs> when you go through a test and you pass it, even when you're going through a test, he says it's better. Peter says it's better than gold, tried by fire. And we know we like gold, but this is the thing. When we go through that test, do we have that mentality about, okay, God, I know you're going to get me through it, or is it woe is me again? I'm going through this thing, and it's not happening the way I want it to. It's not going the way I want it to. And God is not, he's not making it happen for me. But yet we won't do the little things, like pray with our wives. 
We're going to do the little things like teach our children Psalms 34. We won't even learn Psalms 34. The preacher, deacon, Fogus says he wants us to learn Psalms 34. He wants us to learn the books of the Bible. And we act like it's, he's pulling teeth for us just to pick up our word and to start reading that. I had a praise report. This morning. I said, you know, brother, since I started doing that, because God told me, hey, read with your boys. It's brought me so much joy. I'm actually memorizing things because I'm working it out with them. And I love that because God is moving. And when we know that God is moving, we know that God is moving. We see other people getting blessed. We see other people, God, moving in their lives. And we get to the point where we're like, well, God, how come you can't bless me like that? How come I can't get a new car? How come I can't get a house? Well, because you don't do the things that he requires of you. You won't get in your word for any time. You won't fast because, oh, I got to eat. If I can't eat, woo. <laughs> you won't come to none of the functions during the week because you got it. You smart. You understand the word of God. Yeah, you read Jude and you read half of Revelations. And now you got the whole Bible in your mind. In your mind. Instead of understanding that it takes time, it takes work. When I realize that study is work and I have to get down and get dirty instead of skimming, instead of being like, okay, oh well. When I realized that, that's when I found out, okay, God, I'm starting to understand this thing. Not fully understanding it, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting to a point where, God, help me. You know, there's some times in our lives where things aren't going to go the way we want them to. And we're studying, we're fasting, we're praying. We're doing all the things that God requires of us. But yet, things are still not going the way we think they should. Well, I'm here to tell you that things aren't always going to go your way. Things aren't going to always be peaches and cream. Some things are going to happen to you and you're going to be like, why? But I like what Paul said. He said he doesn't frustrate the patience of God. When we get to a point where we're saying God has frustrated me, you need to be careful. You need to be very careful. How dare you say God has frustrated me? He said, come, let us reason together. If we go and reason with him, then the frustration will probably go away. But we're so stuck in us, me, I, that we can't move past go. But I'm here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, here we go, how to pass a test. When you look at the life of Abraham, when we go back to Genesis where he's talking to him, when God told him to go, I don't remember reading where Abraham said, well, you know, Lord, why do I have to go? I don't remember seeing him saying, well, you know, Lord, can we reason together? It said he got up early the next morning and he went on his journey because he trusted God. Many of us, we want to question God because that's who we are. Lord, why me? Lord, why do I got to go through this? So and so didn't go through this. We're focused on other people instead of being focused on ourselves. And God is not pleased with that. What we have to do is we have to be able to take focus off self, put it on God through Jesus Christ, and watch how these tests, when they come, yeah, some of them you might not pass, but that's okay. Because he says he won't give you more than you can bear to be able to bear it. So that's good news. We ought to be shouting right now because sometimes we think that we're the only one going through stuff. We think we're the only one that, that this thing is happening to. We think we're the only one in the world. God has never put this test on me. God has never put this test on so-and-so. God has never put this test on so-and-so. How do you know? Are you around everybody 24-7? You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've, I've done to get to this point. You... You just don't know. Unless God lets me reveal it, you won't know. There comes a time in everybody's life. The Bible says when I was a child, I spake as a child. 
But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In other words, we have to stop, drop, and ask God to help us through. Because when we stop, drop, and ask God to help us through, he can move if you allow him to. Because sometimes our faith, we can't even move. We can't, we can't pick, pick up that chair. Our faith so weak. I like this. Abraham took his, he said, take thy son, thy only son, the one that thou lovest. How many of us would have been able to do that? We can't even discipline our kids right. We can't even tell them, no, stop. Or we're singing to them, stop it. No, sit down, stop it. No, sit down. Instead of putting something on them. People probably go, man, why does... They're always preaching about putting something on, the, on their kids because the Bible tells us so. Amen. The Bible says, spare the rod, you spoil the child. So what we have to do is, you have to do that. God ch chastens us. When we do wrong, hence the Bible says he chastens whom he loves. When we mess up from the floor, guess what God does? But some of us will never get to that point because we don't have the Holy Ghost. We're pretending. We're faking. We're shaking. We show up to church and we do all the pomp and circumstances and all that, and God's nowhere near our heart. You're going to hear this. Depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. But, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? We have to be careful. The Bible says be watchful. Be anxious for nothing. I be hearing people say, ooh, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm anxious for this. I said, no, don't be anxious. Take your, let, let your request be made known unto God so he can be able to smooth it over. Have you ever had a smoothie? Man, some of them smoothies are real tasty. They're so smooth, they go down and just, mm, mm, mm. The Bible says, oh, taste and see how good the Lord is. But many of us never get to that point because we're so stuck. If any of you ever drove a stick shift before, sometimes that gear gets stuck and you can't get it out. That's how some of us are. We're stuck. And God can't move on our behalf because we're stuck. We're stuck in second. God wants us to go to third, but we're stuck in second. <clears throat> God wants us in a blessing your way. <clears throat> but all of a sudden, just when God's getting ready to open up the windows, when he's getting ready to bless you beyond measures. Now, this has happened to me. You go and screw up. Man, I could kick myself sometime. <laughs> I'd be like, wow. God, you was getting ready to open up the windows and Hayward screwed it up again. So I'm telling you, if I'm talking to you about something, I've been through a lot. You need to listen to me. I got, I got a, a little wisdom. I'm 50 right now. I'm half a century. I praise God. I didn't think I was going to make 25, to be honest with you. But God, who is merciful, God who will get us over, amen. Hebrews 11, and I'm going to close. Amen. God is so awesome, but many of us never get to that point. Verse 17. Listen to these first two words. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. How many of us would be able to do that? God said, I want you to take that child, the one you love. And I want you to offer them up to me. Because, you know, the children are supposed to be the Lord's anyway. When you have a child, you need to dedicate that child to God. Let God take hold of that child. Then you probably wouldn't be having so much problems. Do I have problems with my kids? Yeah. But the testing of, the trying of my faith work is patience. I tell myself that when Keon takes off for no reason. And he's out there in them streets. And Lord knows what could happen. But I thank God that he brings them home safe every time. Because one of these times, it may not happen. But I have to hold on to God's word. He told us, it's about three years now, that we won't even recognize Keon. But I got to hold on to that. If I, 
Yeah, do I get frustrated? Yeah. Do I want to spit fire sometimes? Yes. But I don't get to the point where I'm a sin. Because the Bible tells me I can be angry, but don't sin. Many of us, we take it past that point. We want to wait. Called passive aggressive. I know a little bit about that too. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. And then when they get on our last night, we went, Rah! Don't let Bishop find out. CPS will get called on you. Seriously. But this is the thing we have to understand. Let's read on. Amen. God is awesome. And then he says, Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up from the dead, from whence also he received him a figure. Abraham, so much, he had so much faith in God that he knew. The writer of Hebrews said that he knew. God promised him that. And he watched God move over the years. Many of us have watched God move in our lives over the years. And we still refuse to believe and trust that God's going to move on our behalf. Abraham, he had a trust. Because when he was going up the mountain, Isaac asked him, he said, Father, where is the sacrifice? Uh -huh. And what was his response? The Lord will provide. When you get to your Isaac moment, it could be anything. And God said, I need you to sacrifice this. I want you to stop watching so much TV. I want you to stay off Facebook for a month. I want you to do these things. Are we going to say, oh, I can't do that. Facebook? Oh, no. I can't see what Mary Sue is doing. I don't understand what, what, what Paco and the boys are doing. Instead of God wants to get you in his word to meditate on Psalms 1. Meditate on all these things that God would have for us. But we get to the point where we know better than God. God's been around for what? A long, how long? Forever. We got some children like that. Once, the ch once your child gets a certain age, you don't know nothing. You dumb, you stupid. You can't, you can't figure this out. You're too old. But you know, the older I get, the smarter my parents are. Because I was at that point one time too. I said, you know, but Y'all don't know nothing. Y'all old. Because my parents were literally 42 years older than me. So the thing that we have to do is just understand that when God is giving us a test, how do we pass the test? We allow God to move in our lives. We allow God to help us through whatever it is. We allow God to move on our behalf and trust that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. If he's promised you a house, hold on. If he's promised you a car, hold on. If he's promised you a child, hold on. If he's promised you these things, but then the tests keep coming and you're looking at sight, you're not walking by faith. You're looking at what's going on around you. In the eye of a hurricane, tranquility and peace. But all around it is chaos. Sometimes that's how our lives are. They're chaos because we get tore up from the floor up and we don't allow God to come in and smooth it over like the eye of the hurricane. So brothers and sisters, God bless you. Let God help you with your test and you move forward. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord.